And now to declare a vested interest, the next author is uh, uh, my partner, so uh, up to the stage please, dear. Thank you, Julian. Well, has anybody been to the Mesopotamia exhibition? Yes. Okay, well this is a story about it. Um, at the ex at Mesopotamia exhibition, there's a couple of names that aren't there, and they're very interesting names. One is in Heduanna, who is the oldest writer whose name we know, and she was a Sumerian priestess who wrote um, hymns of divine love, which have survived in cuneiform. And the other name is Taputi. Taputi is now regarded as the first chemist. She was probably also a priestess from the Akkadian period of ba Babylon. And she was a perfumier and a distilled perfume. And from the writings of her recipes, it's quite clear that she was an experimented with, experimented with the methods of producing perfume, distilling it. And so she gets some of the credit for being the first chemist. And so I wrote a story about her. Three figures walked in single file in the evening heat haze behind the, the Euphrates River, heading homewards. All women, shawled, hunched by the ba baskets on their backs. The last, youngest and smallest, was further slouched by the year-old baby riding on her hip. As if the sun had blinked, now an extra figure suddenly appeared, appended to their procession. Where day meets night, before the sun god disappeared through the doors to the underworld, can be a time where strange things happen. The three women had taken a risk, staying out so late to gather sweet rushes outside the city gates. Now returning with their baskets dripping and laden, they knew that they must hurry, yet something untoward sneak into the city with them. The third woman, her nostrils full of the scent of leaves and rhizomes on her back, her mind occupied by the problem of how to preserve that cell, nonetheless heard behind her an extra set of shuffling footsteps. Some field worker, some beggar, though very tired and with extra work ahead of her that night, the processing of the sweet flag besides cooking the evening meal, she let her mind fix on the sound. Suddenly she realised something strange about it. It was an exact copy of her own footsteps. She turned, reeled, saw the bent figure, the shawled head, and nothing beneath the fringes of woven wool. For a moment, she and the demon were face to face. Her, his disguise rumbled. Then, then in a flap of confusion, shawled transmogrifying from fronds of hair into great feathery wings, he shot away and up. Her mouth opened wide. She could scream, but that would wake her baby. Worse, it would alert her companions, her censorious sisters-in-law, that she'd somehow, by her attention, drawn the attention of the spirit world. She closed her mouth, turned again as the three trudged, trudged towards the city gates, the watching guards, the safety of a walled city-state, a relatively new thing in the world, the city of Babylon. Thank you. Thank you, Lucy.